Hello and welcome to VLOOKUP, return multiple rows and columns. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Hey, let's just jump right in. Basically, what we have is a table that has a list of invoice IDs. This is gonna be the, the invoice summary, and there's one row for every invoice ID, and there might be some additional columns, maybe a customer ID, maybe a date, and so on and so forth. Then we have invoice detail, and this is a table with like line item detail. So that means there are gonna be multiple rows for each invoice. And it might have things like item, amount, maybe some quantities, and, and you get the idea. And so what we wanna do is grab this list and we wanna somehow return related values from the detail table. And when we think about returning related values, we think about VLOOKUP. But here's the thing, VLOOKUP is designed to return a single cell value from a single row and a single column. So if I go ask VLOOKUP to go find 1001, it's gonna stop at the first matching row and it's gonna ignore any remaining matches. And then it's gonna to shoot to the right and return a single value from a single column. But in this case, we wanna return multiple columns from multiple rows. So if we can't use VLOOKUP, like what are we supposed to do? Do it manually? No, no. We're just gonna use Power Query instead. So the first step is gonna to be to load this table into Power Query. We do that by selecting any cell in the table, going to Data, and From Table Range. Um, this looks pretty good. If we needed to do any transformations, we could, but we're just gonna close and load two, and we're gonna close and load it to a connection-only query and click OK. Summary loads in, and now we basically do the same thing for the detail table from table range, um, and close and load two, and we're gonna go with a connection-only query, click OK. Now that both these tables are in Power Query, we need to do the merge. Okay, and the way that we do that is get data, combine, merge. Okay, and what we wanna do is we wanna specify our two tables. I'm gonna start with summary, and then I'm gonna select detail. And now the important step is to identify that lookup column, or what we would traditionally use VLOOKUP for. And we're gonna do invoice ID and invoice ID. Now we've identified that shared or common or lookup column. Now we can just click OK. This returns the results into Power Query. And right now we have a single row for each invoice ID, and that's exactly what we ultimately want. But we're gonna have to take a little detour. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna first identify multiple columns, or the columns that we want returned, and then we're gonna deal with the rows. So first, the columns. With VLOOKUP, we specify the return column with a, with a value, uh, the column index value. Here we just point and click. So we click expand, and then we would just pick one or multiple columns that we want returned. Here we want item and amount, and I, I don't want a prefix, so I'm gonna uncheck this and click OK. And just like this, now we've selected multiple return columns. And it looks like we're kind of going backwards because now we have, like we have multiple rows for each invoice ID. And that's okay, we're gonna, we're gonna deal with the rows next. So the first thing is to note that we've, we've returned multiple columns. Now let's deal with the rows. Let's think about this for a second. What we want is we want one row for every unique invoice ID, and then we want the cust ID, and then for items, we really want like a comma separated list of all the items in one cell. And then for amount, let's just aggregate them. Let's get the sum of the amount. And while we're at it, we might as well get a count of the number of items for each invoice. Okay, can we do all this? Yeah. Yeah, the way that we do that is by selecting Invoice ID, Transform, Group By. Okay, and this is going to open up the Group By dialog and we click Advanced. Okay, and now we just identify the columns that we want uh, to be included. So the first one that we want is, is the Cust ID. So we pick Cust ID and here we could go with Min or Max and we just identify Cust ID. So that's gonna give us the Cust ID column. The next column is, let's do the amount. So we're gonna go with the amount and we want to sum the amount column. Um, next, let's go with the count. Here we're gonna count, count rows. And finally, and here we're gonna use, um, we're gonna use a trick that Ken and Miguel uh, taught me in one of their workshops. They're amazing. Uh, if you haven't checked out their M is for Data Monkey books, it's, it's a great um, resource. But here what we want is we want the items. 
And what we actually want to return is we don't want to aggregate anything. We want all of the values. So we do all rows. And then we click OK. And now we're back to one row for each invoice. That looks good. Cust ID looks good. Some of the amount looks good. Count of the number of items looks good. And then we just have to deal with this, with this uh, items column. And our goal is to somehow convert that items column into a column that contains comma separated lists of the items. And the way that we do that is by going to add column, custom column. And here we give our custom column a name. I'm going to call it uh, item list. And we use a function called table dot column. And it has two arguments. The first argument is going to be the items table. And then the next is going to be the column name. In this case, it's called item. And then we close that function and we click OK. And now we get this thing here called item list. And if I click on that, I can see a preview. And sure enough, it is including a list of all of the items for each invoice. So the final step is going to be to extract that and place them into a comma separated list. So to do that, we click extract, extract values. And now we would pick whatever delimiter or separating character we want. In this case, we'll just go with comma. We click OK. And let's see if it worked. Yes, yes, it worked. And let's go ahead and delete this. And now we're in good shape. So I'm just going to close and load two. I'm going to send this uh, back into a table in an existing worksheet. I'm going to click this and this and click OK. And let's come over here and confirm it works. And it looks like it works. OK, so what we accomplished is we, we, we did basically a lookup. We returned multiple columns. We also handled multiple rows. And we aggregated the amount column with a sum. We counted. And we also returned a comma separated list of, of the unique items for each invoice. And the best news about Power Query comes every subsequent period. Because let's say there are new invoices in our invoice summary table, and there's new details. We don't have to go through that whole process again. All we have to do is right click and refresh, and any of those new values will go through Power Query and end up in our results table. Good stuff. All right, hey, thanks for joining me. Hope it helps. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University. 